Good day, thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers. I'm Craig the Writer Stewart, and I'm inviting you to join my Patreon. Don't know what a Patreon is? It's my official video diary with only exclusive content that you won't see anyplace else. It's easy to join. Just visit patreon.com forward slash Craig the Writer Stewart. Here's what you'll find on my Patreon. A day in my life, whether that's dinner with friends or a typical work day. Live Q&As with members of my Patreon about each episode of the T.S. Madison experience and what I was really thinking. I'll even bring you on vacation with me. The video will make you think that you are right there. And last but not least, for all of my aspiring writers, I give you firsthand, one-on-one, personalized attention, answering all of your questions about publishing and self-publishing. So what are you waiting for? Join now. Swipe up or visit www.patreon.com forward slash Craig the Writer Stewart. I'll see you soon. Oh, and one more thing. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's youtube.com forward slash Craig the Writer. Do it now. Good day, thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers. I'm Craig the Writer Stewart, and this is So Much to Say YouTube TV. These are my thoughts in my voice on black shit, white shit, gay shit, and everything in between. So Much to Say YouTube TV is the place that you come to learn and grow because we discuss socially relevant things mixed with a splash of humor. If you know you have tissue paper feelings, this probably isn't the channel for you. But and however, since you're here, I just need for you to do two things. Hit the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on that little bell so that you get the notification every single time that I go live or upload something new. I'll see you soon. Bye. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey, Neha. Hey, Neha. Hey, Neha. Hey, Neha. Hey, Neha. What's up? Hey, boy. Hey. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey, hey, what's going on, people? What's going on, people? What's up, gags and giggles? Rashida Carey, Mimi Parker, phenomenal woman. Alisa, please hit the like, the share, and the subscribe button. I appreciate it. I appreciate when you hit that button because, you know, it doesn't cost you anything. My love don't cost a thing. If you want to think, even if you were broke, my love don't cost a thing, a thing, a thing. Listen, good day, thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers. I'm only speaking to the thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers, all you negative Nancys. All you negative Nancys, I need you to take heed to the overture for the beginning of the show where I say, um, if you got tissue paper feelings, this is not the channel for you. Amen. This is just good energy over here. Good energy, good she. You know, I had to walk through the house today in every room with my Palo Santos piece of wood burning through the house. You know what I mean? Because you got to clean out. You got to cleanse out every now and then. Amen. Amen. You know, you, we're trying to go to a new season. We're trying to go to a new season in life. Amen. And you got to clean all of that subterfuge out. Somebody say subterfuge. S-U-B-T-E-R-F-U-G-E. Subterfuge. Amen. Subterfuge. All of that clutter, all of that mess, all of that unnecessary stuff that you don't need. Come on, subterfuge. You don't hear me? You ain't got to wait till January 1st to, to start anew. Amen. You start anew every day you wake up and put your feet on the floor. Amen. Every single day that you step out of your bed, you may not be in a bed. You might be in a cot. You may not be in a cot. You may be on a mattress laying on the floor, a little pallet that you'd make. You might be on some blankets. Amen. But see, time and chance happens for every man. Amen. Because once upon a time, once upon a time, niece, I was lying on a mattress on the floor too. Amen. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Craig. And he was over there at 227. And I had moved in. I had to borrow money from Elliot. You all know Elliot. I had to borrow money from Elliot. He paid the first and the last month's rent, which was the security deposit for me to move in. And I just had a few nickels and dimes to roll together. And I was able to get um, 
I was able to, to look, you know, the spirit is quickening. I was able to put together those quarters, nickels and dimes so I could get myself a little mattress from over at the rooms to go. It wasn't the best mattress, but it served this purchase. Amen. Pur purpose. Amen. And I laid on that floor on that mattress with my little throw cover because I ain't even had no blankets and sheets yet. Amen. Amen. But see, when you're grateful for what you have, where you are, the universe can take you to the next level. Amen. He'll bless you with a bed. He'll bless you with a frame. Amen. He'll bless you with a footboard and a headboard if that's what you want. He'll bless you with a platform. <laughs> He'll bless you with a mattress cover. Amen. Because when you first start out, ain't nobody got no money for no mattress cover. I don't plan on peeing on myself, so I don't need no mattress cover. But now, amen, now I need a mattress cover. I just don't want to lay on the bed if I don't have a mattress cover. Amen. I don't want to lay on the bed if I don't have a mattress cover. Did I say good day thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers? I'm Craig the Writer Stewart, and this is the YouTube live version, because I'm still blocked on Facebook, of so much to say. These are my thoughts in my voice on black shit white shit, gay shit, and everything in between. Niece, we are driving on electricity. Now, I was doing a little sample. I was doing a little experiment, I should say, not a sample. sample. I was doing a little experiment. And you all have really been loving my hair. Ooh, I'm going to the chiropractor, niece. I don't know why, but when I just, when I turn this way, it's like my, my, um, it, it's like my, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like my, uh, I can't, turn all the way around. Uh, I I just thought about it earlier because I was going to explain it to her when I, when I got there. Um, I can't think of the word I'm looking for. But anyway, I'm going to tell them, girl, my, uh, it's my movement. It's something it's called. It's something it's called. I can't, I think, I can't think of what it's called. No, not my rotator cuff, niece. That's up here. And she a nurse. How is she going to say rotator cuff? She a nurse, niece. No, it's it's like range of motion. My range of motion I can't, is restricted. My range of motion is restricted. And so like when I go to go like that, but at any rate, what was I saying? Oh, yes, I was doing a, a, a an experiment. And so when I first got the car, I was driving only on electricity. Well, what I was saying was y'all really liking my haircut. Y'all been sending me messages talking about my haircut is really doing its thing lately. You see that hair that came in. I need to call the pharmacy and get my prescription refilled for my hair be falling out again and looking like some of y'all over there on TikTok. But um, the first two weeks that I had the car, I had the same tank of gas for two weeks because I was driving on electricity. I would plug it up when I got home and every time I went out, I was driving on electricity. Well, I got gas the other day Praise God, gas has gone down. It's only $50 now. Please hit the like button on the video. The moderators are telling you guys to hit the like button, means Hit the like button and the subscribe. And um, thank you very much, Carlene. She's working from home. <laughs> She's playing on these white people's time. <laughs> she over there uh, code switching and stuff at work and trying to talk to us and stuff. I, we see you, Car Carlene. We see you, Carlene. We see you. So anyway, when I uh, filled up the other day, uh, it was $50, niece. I'm going to need somebody to work at a gas station so I can pull up to the to the tank and y'all be like, oh, yeah, you know, go ahead and um, get you some gas. But anyway, um, I put gas in here and I'm already down to almost a, a half a tank. So, you know, I will be driving on electricity. But here's what I'm going to tell you about electricity. Oh, somebody sent the cash app through here. Come on, somebody. Come on, powerful. And my girl Barbara Hyman, they the only two that send something. I, that's how I know a recession. Know. That's how I know a recession is coming. Who was this called? Mm -mm, not no potential spam. No, ma'am. Let me go ahead and block that number. We don't answer spam calls. That's how I know a recession is coming, niece. You know how I know a recession is coming? Because those cash apps have slowed up. Amen. Amen. I understand, though. I understand. But see, that's why I've been trying to tell you about pay for your say. It's scrolling out at the bottom. It's 175 now, though. Y'all have plenty of time at 135 and 125. You got to get on the pay for your say because Christmas, Krima is coming. And I know some of y'all want to be uh, getting gifts and stuff for Krima. Y'all want to start shopping in October and November. If you sign up for pay for your say now, 
you'll go ahead and get in your rhythm. You'll get in your flow and you'll be making your money by October, November. You'll get your layaway off by Thanksgiving. Amen. Come on. Thank Thanksgiving layaway. But um, I am such a people watcher. I don't know how this little girl is walking across the street, but um, she got a little scrub set. She got on like a matching scrub. And baby, let me tell y'all something. My girl Melody, is it Melody or Melanie? My girl Melody over in Dubai, she been cleaning up on pay for your sake. I meant to post her testimonial the other day because she said that she'd have made about $10,000 off of pay for your sake. And I definitely don't remember getting my cut. Just like, just like the church want their cut, I, I'm going to need my cut. <laughs> but um, it, listen, when I tell you, let, let me explain something to y'all. I know I was cutting up when I first got on here, but I'm going to tell y'all something, some real shit. When your life feels like it's falling apart, watch this. When it feels like everything is crumbling around you, Sometimes God has to break everything down to the foundation, has to break you down to the foundation to build you back up. Amen. To build you back up. I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you an example. Like when the pandemic happened and a lot of people were losing their homes and having to downsize to apartments and you know, like when that mortgage crisis happened and all of that stuff was going on and people were stressing themselves out high blood pressure heart attacks and strokes and shit trying to hold on to a house and so um look look, look she talking about she didn't donated some books that does not compute to how much money you made no. but anyway but you know people were having strokes and, and losing their minds trying to hold on to their homes right or hold on to a car when the spirit was telling you, let that shit go. Now, the spirit may not have said shit, but the spirit said, let it go. Because, see, if you trust and release it, when you trust and release it, you know, to release something, you have to open your hands. And what will happen is when you trust that you will be restored, your hands are already open, these, because you didn't, you didn't release it. The universe, God has no choice but to put, but to deposit something back in your life, and it'll be bigger and better. I've shared this story before, but it just popped on my heart. When I moved to 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 LA, I had nothing, and I do mean nothing, like Whitney Houston. I had nothing, nothing, nothing. Cause see, some of y'all missed that that little bodyguard reference. I had nothing. And I'm going to tell you, there were moments that I was so afraid. There were moments that I was so scared of selling my few little pieces of furniture that I had here because I only had a couple pieces of furniture in these. That's what I'm telling you. When I came back to Atlanta, I was sleeping on a mattress. That I was not just joking. I'm telling you the truth. I was so afraid to let go of the little pieces of valuables, things that I call valuables at the time. But there was some. There was a whisper, niece. Something hit, it hit me in the back of my head. It said, "Listen, if you trust me and let it go, I promise I'll give it all back and some more." I'm telling you, that ain't nothing I heard in church because I know I don't go to church. Church is at home on my knees, praying. See, some of y'all minds went to the gutter when I said on my knees. I'm on my knees praying, niece. And I literally, before I got on this live, I went through the house with my Palo Santos. I'm telling you, I went through that. I'm gonna find me some. Um, some sage while I'm out here too. And I'm gonna go through the house again. You know what I'm saying? You gotta smudge, you gotta clear that stuff out. You gotta get them spirits out, get that old energy out. Cause sometimes every now and then we slip back. Sometimes we slip back. We backslide on our faith, amen? Faith is a muscle. I tell y'all this all the time. Just like I'm on my way to this gym. If I stop going to the gym, these muscles get flat. It ain't same thing with muscles. If you stop believing and trusting and knowing who's you are, whose you are. Oh yeah, I need to open up the window so, uh, so I can let all that energy go out. Yes, come on knees. Come on knees, you gotta tell me, educate me. You gotta exercise that faith muscle. It ain't about going to church because there's a lot of people that sit in church every Sunday and they ain't got near a bit of faith. 
But my point in saying all of this, I don't know what's on the horizon. <laughs> I don't know what's coming around this corner that I'm that I'm approaching. But niece, it got to be something. Because this past year has been amazing, but it's also been challenging. It's been so, so very challenging for me. You know, um, in my personal life, you know, my mom, relationship, career, like there's so much. Oh, come on, live from Dubai. Come on, niece. She said, mm -mm, let me let me get this out of here. Thanks, niece. But I I, I have to believe. I have to believe that there is something around that corner to restore, to make sense of all of this stuff right now, to make sense of this moment that I'm in right now, right? And I can see the light. I'm, co I'm coming around the mountain when I come. I'm coming around that mountain, niece. I see that light around that corner. And, you know, I'm just pacing myself. I'm breathing. I breathe it in and I breathe it out. You know what I'm saying? You know, you breathe it in and you breathe it out. And I'm already imagining. I give you these tools in Book of Jewels, niece. If you don't have Book of Jewels, you're missing out. I give you these tools. And so what I do is I start to imagine myself on the other side of whatever it is. You got to imagine yourself on the other side of it. You got to see yourself on the other side. You ain't got to figure out the way. You ain't got to figure out the way. You just got to imagine yourself on the other side, knowing that the outcome is there. Knowing that the outcome is there. I'm going to need y'all to download Crackle. Because when this TV show, Outspoken, hits, I'm going to need everybody in here to share the trailer, the sizzle reel, the episode, something. I'm going to need you to tweet about it. Hashtag on Instagram. Whatever you got to do, niece. I'm going to need you to do your part. I don't care if you got two followers. If you don't know how to share on your social media, I'm going to need you to get in some practices right now. I'm going to need you to get somebody to teach you how to share these so when the show drops, you'll know how to share. Okay? We're going to need everybody. This is going to be a community effort. Let me go around because I don't know what's going on up here, but they are blocking the traffic, and I'm not about to sit at this light two and three cycles. Um... But, you know, here's the beauty of getting older. For those of you that abhor aging, for those of you that, that, that has this, has this, for those of you that have disdain and reticence about getting older, the beauty with getting older is you learn through experience and lived experiences, the mechanics of how life works. You start to understand the mechanics. You start to feel, certain scenarios start to feel familiar, right? And you start to rest easy because you're like, I, I, I'm gonna get through this. I've felt like this before. I've seen experience, uh, circumstances and scenarios like this. I'm gonna be all right. You know what I mean? Like. You start to understand the mechanics of life, how, how the universe works. It's all designed to grow us. It's all, all of these things are, you know, designed to grow us, to, to move us to the next point, right? To move us around that next corner, to move us up that next step. It, it, you know, you gotta get comfortable being uncomfortable. That's it. You got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Now, let me circle back to what I was going to say. <laughs> you know, church folks say the devil is always busy. Amen. Now, I don't know if I get into all of that. But what I do believe is um, there are forces that will occur in our lives to, to challenge us to grow. And so some Negro is really setting up a lot of online profiles using my photos. <laughs> now, I got a DM today from somebody on Instagram and I posted it on my Insta story. I think I posted it on my YouTube story. I'm not sure. But I definitely posted it on my Instagram story. Somebody named Patrick. 
this Negro, I'm guessing it's a man. I don't know. I'm guessing it's a man using my pictures and not a woman. But, you know, you never know with these catfish. He got me at 55 years old. First of all, I do not look 55. Okay? Let me start there. First of all, I don't look 42. Do I need to blink? And um, he got me at 55. He got me Hispanic. I'm Hispanic, niece. And I'm looking for a Christian woman. Looking for a Christian woman. What else did this profile say? Thank you, Sophia. She sent the cash app. Hey, niece. And I'm on tag. He got me on tag. Oh, and I, and I live in Roanoke, Virginia. I live in Roanoke, Virginia. I do speak English. I'm Hispanic slash Latino. I'm straight. I'm Christian. And um, I'm 55. And my name is Patrick Williams. Now, listen, niece. Part of the reason why I never wanted to be in front of the camera was for foolishness like this, right? Part of the reason I never wanted to be in front of the camera is because I enjoy going into the grocery store and nobody knowing who I am. Amen. I've never wanted to be in front of the camera, right? Now, now here's what I understand and what I know now. That in order for God to really manifest my dreams, I had to step from behind the camera. Somebody missed that. Mm -hmm. I was resisting for a very long time, right? I was resisting for a very long time. I've always had really big dreams. I've always had really, really, really big dreams and lots of ambition. And I think looking back, hindsight is 22, it's 2020. Looking back, I realized a couple things. First, some of my dreams never happened when I wanted them to happen because I was resisting. See, the, the call has always been on my life, right? Just like the call has always been on your life. You may know it. You may know what your calling is. When I say he is masked up going into the gym, the calling has always been on my life. But I was trying to decide how God used me, right? Right? And see, I had been praying consistently, dear God, please use me, use my life, use my work, use my gift, use my words, use my talent, use my personality. These are things I was pr praying 10, 15 years ago. And then when God started showing up and, show and directing me on how he wanted to use me, I wanted to choose. Now, I'm, this, I'm, I know I'm speaking to somebody now. You can't ask God to use you, to use your life to use your work, to use your gift. And then you want to decide how he uses you. And see, for me, I wanted to decide. I didn't want to be, yeah, you can use me, but I want to be in the background, right? When I was writing my stage play, when I was writing music, when I published my, my books, like I still didn't want to be out in the front. I just wanted to put the books out and people go buy them. But the books didn't start moving until... I started doing so much to say podcast. Okay. And I just had this conversation with Terrence. You all know DT, the one who moved to California. I just had this conversation with him a couple weeks ago because, um, you're, come on now. You can't ask God to order your steps if you don't want to move your feet. And so I said to, um, DT, um, now, see, I know Neve ain't read the first book, Neves. Neves, you ain't read the first book. Neves, I talk about that in the first book, Neves. Words never spoken. But at any rate, um, I said to DT the other day, because when I first started So Much To Say podcast, and you can go and see the ep listen to the episodes. They're on my YouTube channel. It's under um, So Much To Say podcast. It's, it's, it's a playlist for it, for all of the podcasts. But at any rate, when I started doing the podcast, he was there in the beginning with me. He helped me um, get my book, my first guest and stuff like that. Excuse me. I'm about to wrap up because I got to go in this gym and get my exercise in for my appointment for this um, chiropractor. But um, 
when I started doing my podcast, I wasn't really living my full self out in out 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 here in social media. Now I was myself in my real life. Like I gave you all of this. But I didn't want to give you all of this on social media because I was so afraid of being judged. I was so afraid of being um, catfished. Not catfished, but people using my pictures and, you know, all that kind of dumb shit that comes with being in front of the camera. Baby, live from Dubai is not playing today. That one ain't even showing up. It ain't even showing up, niece. I don't know why it ain't showing up, but it should. But at any rate, thank you so very much, um, live from Dubai. Um, and so I wasn't comfortable. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you very much. So thank you, Melody. So when I, I wasn't comfortable being on a podcast, even though you could only hear me, and I wasn't comfortable being in front of on a camera, even if you go back and look at some of those first videos that I did with Madison, I was very clamish and just wasn't really trying to do a lot of talking and, you know, just this, that, and the third. So um, when I was about to do the podcast, DT said to me, now listen, if you're going to do this podcast, you need to give them all of Craig. He said, you can't go on there just being all prim and proper and trying to sound like a broadcast journalist. He said, you need to give, give all of you, all of your personality. He said, because Craig, you're really funny. He said, um, you're really serious too. He said, but they need to see all that. He said, you got your voice. He said, I love your speaking. Like he used to tell me all of the time that he loved my speaking voice. And even to this day, he'd be like, God, I love your voice. But he's like, I want to hear the inflections. You know what I mean? Like he wanted all of that. He said, don't be getting on there trying to be, uh, basically he was saying, don't get on there and try to be all closeted. And what I realized once I started doing those podcasts and started releasing, first of all, it was therapeutic for me. Two, um, I started getting so many messages from people saying, oh my God, like so many guys, so many gay men saying, you know what? You give me permission to be who I am, right? You're so unapologetic. You're da 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 da. And so um, what I realized once I was standing in my full truth, you know, didn't care. I was moving through the world as my authentic self, even on live, because I only let my friends and family see this part of me before. Um, but what I realized was that was the key. God has started to unlock doors because it was like, no, I can't elevate you if you're going to go out here and be one of these other closeted, closeted gays. I can't move you to the forefront. I can't really move these books. I can't push these. I thought that was somebody I knew. I can't push these books. You know, I can't really move these books if you're not ready to be in front of the people. If you're not really ready to talk and, and show your real self. And so doing that podcast, so much to say, allowed me a freedom that I had never experience uh, uh, fully that I had never really fully experienced in front of everybody. And, um, and so once I started to do that, doors started to open and I realized that I was the reason that my, 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 my dreams were in a holding path. They were just kind of stuck right there. And then they did, didn't start to move on until, or, or, or elevate until I really got clear about who I was. Sir, they have a locker room in the gym. Why are you changing out here in the parking lot? Why y'all be doing so much? And no, he's not black. He's Asian. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I just felt like I needed to share that with you all. Because I know there's some closeted lesbians in here. <laughs> it ain't just closeted gay men. I know some. there's some people in here waiting to transition to live your truth. Amen. Somebody here ready to walk in their truth. And you afraid, but you only get one life. You get one life. And I do mean one. And that's it. That's it.
I think that's all I want to say. I'm just waiting to see if the spirit is going <laughs> to give me another word before I get out of this car. But I think that's all I want to say. Let me just say this real quick and then I'm going to get out. Because somebody needs to hear this too. I had a conversation with a few of my, well, actually one of my gay friends and two of his friends. So it was four of us um, talking last night. And the conversation started moving towards um, relationships, uh, intimacy, pride, ego, um, having enough fight in you to save your relationship, to fight for your relationship. And I was saying to them, I just think as gay men, and this doesn't just apply to gay men, but we were speaking from this lens. I think that the case with a lot of gay men, a lot of gay men, I believe, will be lonely, will grow old alone because we're so afraid to fight for love. We're so willing to save face that we don't want to put that pride and ego to the side and say what needs to be said because we're afraid. We're more afraid than we are willing to try. And um, what prompted the conversation was one of the guys that was there, he and his partner just built a house, but he said they've been together off and on for like 18 years. They've been back together now for eight years. But he said they, they were off and on for a while. And he said um, part of the reason that they got back together was because um, his mom passed. And that kind of brought them back together. But um, And so it kind of just opened up this conversation about relationships and love and how... Um, men in particular are oftentimes so scary when it comes to love and when it comes to being emotionally naked. And, um, you know, that's really what it's about. And I've said this to you guys before, time and time again. Um, if that one, if, 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 if your next conversation with somebody that you're in this complicated relationship with or a relationship they may have recently broken up, if, if your next conversation was going to be the conversation to bring you back together, would you have it? Or are you going to sit still and let your pride and ego take over and prevent you from saying what you need to say or prevent you from saying what you want to say? And so my guess is the answer would be no. Um, you would say what you, wanted, you want to say because you would save the relationship if you could, right? So um, let that be, let that soak in and sink in. Let me see if anybody sent the cash up so I can say thank you because I don't want you to think I'm ungrateful. Jackie Cheatham, thank you very much. Vicky Frazier, Big Mike, Andrea. Come on, somebody. <laughs> um, but at any rate, listen, you guys have an amazing day. Keon and I may get on the live today. Baby, let me tell you what I've been doing with my skin lately. Because y'all have also been messaging me about my skin. See, some of the kids be thinking that I be putting on makeup. But Nisa, it ain't no makeup here. Let me tell you something. Vitamin C. I got these vitamin C drops. I've been putting it on my face for about the past month. Baby, I still use my black soap to clear my skin and all that stuff. I wash my face with black soap daily. I don't use a rag. I just lather it on my hands and go over my face with the black soap. And then at night, before I go to bed, I put drops on my face and I, you know, smooth it all out on my neck. You, you got to get your neck because, you know, some of y'all got these old looking necks. Some of y'all got that loose skin around your neck and you're only 25. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but. And then you still put a little moisturizer on. Amen? You know, some of y'all neglect your neck. And so you might be 25 in age, but you're 72 down here, 
past your jawline <laughs> around the throat. <laughs> you're 72 around your throat. You're a senior citizen. You're giving AARP down here. It's giving 10% off at, at Denny's and Shoney's down here. <laughs> or 15%, whatever it is. It's giving a discounted movie ticket for seniors. Hmm? You don't hear me, though. You ain't picking up what I'm putting down. See, some of y'all, y'all moisturizing up here, and you're getting around here, around these eyes and things, but you're forgetting them necks. And right here along your earlobes, you got to get right here, too, especially white folks, because y'all y'all wrinkle up something terrible right here. Y'all ever notice white folks? Now, white folks, don't be getting in my comments and because I get on black people, too. Y'all ever look at white folks' ears, like, right around here? But it'd be so wrinkled right here. And across that lobe, you be like, were you sunbathing on your ears? Like what? What? What were you doing? Let me get off here. Listen, you guys have an amazing Tuesday. Keon and I may get on this live tonight. Let me call that um that little young lady real quick. Let me let me see. Let me see if he gonna answer. Call Keon. Calling Keon Stafford. If he ain't on lunch break, he gonna be whispering. Watch. Because he on the white people's job like Carlene is. Working. Working. Yes, ma'am. Oh, girl, you in the office? Because, girl, you whispering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, girl, I can always tell when you in the office, girl. Because when you out in that parking lot with them little, uh, with them little gay heels, you be walking around in, girl. You be, you be stepping loud. You be talking loud. And your hands be going. But see, when you're in that office, girl, you try to get professional. What do you want, Biggs? I, I didn't hear you. Say it again. I said, what do you want, Biggs? Oh, you said, what do I want, bitch? Can you say it a little louder? My my miracle ear, my miracle ear battery is, isn't really working. What do you want, child? What's uh, are we doing a live tonight? Yes, that's fine. I mean, I today forgot. today is Wednesday, and I mean, it ain't Thursday, but no, I mean. No, today, actually, today is Tuesday, actually. Oh, today is Tuesday. Oh, my dates are running together. <laughs> my dates are. I can't stand it. I can't stand you. My dates are running together. <laughs> Where you at? Parked at the gym, about to go in here. Do you have me on Patreon? Because you, you are not on Patreon. You are on full blast on YouTube. Oh, you just nasty. You need to let me know when you record. I don't think to this. Well, girl, you at work, so I knew you were gonna say anything too racy. <laughs> you sitting there on the white people's time clock. Um, I should work for black people. Your direct supervisor may be black, but them people that run that school are white. Please believe. Actually, they're not white, actually. Well, what are they? They're Indian. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I knew they weren't Negress. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I, I work for Caucasian people. Oh, I knew they were white. Listen, Atlanta is black. Georgia is white. And I'm going to need you to make sure you are registered to vote because we got to get Stacey Abrams in this office. I'm registered to vote, are you? Yeah, I'm registered to vote. And you make sure your ass be at them polls, bitch. And get down there with them with them, with them, um, hookahs and shit while the people are in the line. People can be smoking hookah from your new business while you while they standing in line waiting for to vote. Right, right, right. You can pass out you some business cards. People. Right, you can pass out business cards. She's <laughs> so pretty. Ah! All right, let me go on in this gym. No. Oh, now you about to get up so you can talk. No, you're not going to have me um, miss my workout because you want me to be um, aging like um, some of you millennials. No, I'm a millennial. You gen what is What are y'all, Gen Z? No, no. Um, actually, I'm a millennial, honey. The generation under me is Gen Z. Oh, I'm Generation X. No, great. No, you you a baby? No, you a baby boomer. <laughs> bitch, I ain't that baby boomer, bitch. I'm Generation X. You a baby boomer? No, I'm not, bitch. 
But I was just like, oh, Craig, how are you? It's 45, 46. You know, you, you, you was knocking at the door, baby boy. No, I wasn't either, bitch. The door was closed by the time I came through. <laughs> the door was closed by the time I came through. You know what? Get off my phone. All right, I'll have an it. amazing day at work. Okay, what time are we going to do the live, girl? I guess 9 o'clock. What time are you coming over? No, well, Greg, I guess we ain't doing one. Wait, what? I'm sorry? I said, I guess we ain't doing one. Why well, you not gonna you're not gonna come you're not gonna come to my villa? <laughs> call me, call, call me later, child. I see what the I see what the lower the lower has in store. Ah, bye. 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 I knew he was gonna be like, ah, ah. Listen. Ah, Luther, I'm gonna try to get me blocked. Oh, let me call that bitch back because I gotta tell him something. I forgot to tell him this. Yes, ma'am. And another thing, I meant to tell you this. I meant to chew your ass up about this the other day. That motherfucking Tiffany Haddish video with Aries or whatever his name was with that R. Kelly playing in the background surely did block my video last week. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> oh, bitch, I went in and cleaned that right up out of there. I said, oh, no, I'm going to need to monetize this video. Y'all going to have to get out of here with this. Oh, I need to do the same thing. Hopefully it, it um, transferred to mine, too. Yeah, I, I surely did. No, it ain't going to transfer to yours. Because it's streamed Ooh. on your channel. You got to go in there and... It... <laughs> she knows she hoping to get it on hers, too. But listen. I went in there and had to clean that out of there. I said, oh, no, y'all not about that. Mm -mm. R. Kelly ain't getting this money right? from this video. Sorry. But anyway, listen, you have an amazing day. All right. Thank you. All right. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Listen, everybody. I done gave y'all uh, 45 minutes. I done sat in this car, burning gas. It ain't even gas. It's electricity, but still. Anyway, listen, you AC running. You all have an amazing afternoon, an amazing Tuesday. I hope I brought you a little bit of um, sunshine today. I hope I shifted the way you were thinking. If you were thinking negatively about where you are in your life or what you need to be doing or whatever. Um, yeah, you can purchase books from CraigTheWriterStewart.com. I sign them and I ship them out. Um, all of my books are there. Or you can purchase them from Amazon. Or you can purchase from Audible. If you're not a girl who, or guy who likes to read, I will read them to you. Download them on Audible. They're on your devices, your Kindle, your Nook, and your iPad and all them things, too. On your iPhone. Live from Dubai, my girl Melody, thank you very much. I need to post your testimonial. Paid for your say is 175 Craig175 is the promo code. Go on over there, Nisa. That, that, that recession is coming, I'm trying to tell you. Don't be emailing me and DM, DMing me come December talking about somebody DM me the other day talking about I lost my job and I was just about to sign up for pay for your sake. Bye, y'all.